Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to be presenting my idea on a UK-British film. Uh, to start off with, we'll have a little introduction on what a UK film is. So, UK film industry is worth uh, 6.4 billion in 2011, and reports show that it's grown by 36% uh, to 2014, up to 18 billion. This is uh, four twelfths of this is uh, the comedy genre. This is the genre that I want to go into to create my film, as well as action, which is higher in percentage. Um, this is simply because making people laugh is one of the biggest things you can earn money with, and UK are pretty good at doing that with other films like Shaun of the Dead and Shaun, uh, Shaun of the Sheep and other movies like The Legend. Uh, following this, I'm going into my treatment. The treatment of my movie is, it begins in a, uh, a UK bar or pub or some sort of um, show, social location and there's, it's, 90, it's 1960s, 70s kind of gringy pub with smoke filled rooms and things like that. And the five main characters are sitting in this room having a drink and socialising with, with each other. And one of the main characters, his name's Kevin, um, wants to play darts, but no one really wants to play with him. So the main leader of the group, Idris Alba, he's played by Israel, his name's Hector, um, says, OK, I'll, I'll have a game of darts with you. Kevin is really adamant that he's going to win this game, and he doesn't. Idris wipes the floor with him on this game of darts. Kevin's feeling really let down and left like in the, the, the like uh, in this pit. So he goes around and he challenges these people behind them in the next door in this location. But he doesn't realise that these are hardcore criminals sort of a thing. They say okay. And Kevin, who's not the smartest and doesn't appear to be uh, a person of educated uh, status, beats them. And this obviously irritates them to the point where later on that night after Kevin goes home pretty drunk, they kidnap him. Uh, after they've kidnapped him, they hold him for ransom and the f four of the friends that are left in the bar, they, um, they try and uh, re re regain him through because they haven't got the money to pay for his, uh, his hostage fees, I say. So they have to become gangsters and so they contact the head who's um, the head of the organisation and he's like, OK, I'll give you a chance. If you can steal me the money, I'll give, you, I'll give you Kevin back sort of thing. They're not very good at being gangsters and it goes wrong from the offset. There's scenes in, there's key scenes in there, things that, um, like one part where they're trying to rob an old lady and they end up getting robbed themselves. And then at the end, the whole grand thing is uh, held up in a bank where they try and rob a bank and they end up taking down the whole organisation, uh, the criminal organisation, and that's how it ends sort of thing. The length of the film is 90 minutes. This is because an hour and a half is the average length for a UK feature film. Any longer than that and people start to get a bit bored because of things like um, people like to fidget and things like that. Uh, the pre-production and locations is obviously the first location that I set uh, was the pub. This is like one of the main locations in the whole production and it's going to be typical English pub wood everywhere, carpets from no one knows when, and a uh, smoke filled there and a bartender that everyone knows by name. The second location is where Kevin's being held, and this is a derelict building with what one chair and some lighting and different random things about make you look a bit uh, uh, derelict. And the final is the grandest location of all, and this is where most of the money is going to be spent, and it's at the bank. The bank is going to be... Um, one of the biggest locations as well, being um, fairly old, but it's still going to have British elements to it, like um, like London's like London's uh, not like a uh, actual bank sort of thing. So it's going to have um, uh, different like uh, places where people deposit money and things like that. Anyway, continuing is budget. The budget of, of my uh, stars is uh, fairly extensive because no one can actually put an actual figure on some of these um, actors because they will work for different amounts of money 
throughout and I've done mine according to days. Like I've said 12 weeks but they won't be working for the full 12 weeks. They'll be working for days in these 12 weeks because I have a 14 week actual filming production thing so they'll work for probably two or three days a week and that's where the figures are coming from. It can be raised if they work for longer or work for more time and this is where we have um, money in the budget to, expend, uh, to spend on this. So I've started off with Vijay Shaba for 500k for 12 weeks. He probably won't be working for 12 weeks because he's, a, he's an actor that has a, a net worth of about 12 million. So obviously he's a, a well paid actor for what he does. Gary Oldman, 10 weeks, he's not going to be working for 10 weeks, but as I said, he's getting paid the same for what he um, is doing. So he's probably going to work for less. Ben Kingsley, he's not a very well-known actor, so you can pay him a little bit less. And the total of that would be about two, two million for the actors. Now this is where the real money is spent on sets and, and uh, jobs for people. And this is uh, where four million, well, four, more than four, 4.8 million is spent. And it goes through of the, all the jobs that need to be done. So prop making, uh, set designers, technicians and things like that. This is all adding up as long as, uh, as well as um, different things like wire cam operators, grips and so on. Um, going on to equipment, we have um, several different types of camera, uh, latest monitors and things like this, just to make sure that our production is done to a high quality and is allowed to um, be edited correctly for the actual effect of what a British UK film is. Um, the grand total is 6.8 million but this is what the total of all of the things I've just said so I would be looking for to be funded to about 7 to 7.2 million. This is because I'd like to have some reserve money just in case things go wrong or people need to be paid more. Um, 6.8 million in bitcoins, 23610, oh, if you wanted to pay for anything like that. Just an odd fact for you. Uh, the production schedule. Going through the production schedule, the first pre-production is 28 weeks. 28 weeks is a long time, but this is to get everything fit in, uh, to fit into that time schedule. So we're starting off with writers. It needs to be writ and purposefully writ because my movie is not about how action packed it is or it's more about funny elements because building a likeness for the characters in each one it should be written to do that and I don't think you can be given any less time than 10 weeks to do that because if, if it's written poorly then the effect of the movie won't be as good as I want it to be. Um, moving on you have uh, the filming which should last 14 weeks. As I said all my actors won't be on set for the 14 weeks they'll do days within it and uh, this will be split with filming and different things like um, actual like uh, the, 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 the three different locations that are there. And as a standard rule, um, post-production should be three times longer than your um, actual uh, filming. So this lasts 42 weeks. In total, this lasts over a year to make the whole film. And to the standard that we should do it, uh, make this film, then that's, that's, that's more than enough. I'd like to re, uh, release the movie on the 14th of July 2017. This is to go with my audience. My audience is going to be UK um, teens that, that are in a D class which don't have much money, but as the summer comes around, they want things to do and to fill boredom, they can watch my movie. The cast, so as I said, the five main people in the bar, uh, the protagonists, so we have Hector, Kevin, Paulie, Tony and Dexter. These are all played by actual UK stars. Um, I haven't gone away with anything apart from Mullet, who's played by uh, Al Pacino, and he's an American person, so American Mullet. I, I don't know where I went with that. He actually doesn't have a mullet, which is the, the ironic part of this whole comedy sort of thing. There's little, little bits and tricks in there that just make no sense, but would be funny to a UK audience sort of thing. I chose Hector for Idris Elba because he's a strong leading role as an actor and he shows what 
a UK representative would be at that point. Uh, Kevin is Gary Oldman because Gary Oldman looks a bit wacky and I reckon Kevin would, uh, would, would suit his acting in that way because of the way he does things. Uh, Paulie, Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley's been in a lot of gangster movies and just playing in this would surely just kind of role reverse what he's done. He wouldn't be acting as a hard man as per se, he'd be acting as a wannabe hard man so before he actually got to that sort of point. Uh, same with Vinnie Jones and Tom Hardy's an upcoming actor so he can play anyone. He played in the uh, movie Legend which was a, another gangster movie but he played both the Cray Twins and uh, he did a really good job in that. Moving on to the antagonist, Jimmy, he's the, um, the actual like a uh, kingpin of all the organisations who goes through and he'd be played by Ray Winston because he's one of the one of the leading sort of actual gangsters that have been on uh, UK films. Felix is played by Michael Caine. Um, Michael Caine's not actually a gangster but he does um, He's like a very, okay, to put in better words, he's like a very good person that helps with things like he played the butler in Batman, but that's not a UK film, but he's like a, he's, he's like a mastermind sort of thing. He handles all of Jimmy's finances and things like that and does odd jobs for him. And uh, because of his age, he's a lot more experienced and he chooses not to do these things. And as I've explained, Mullet is just a joke in itself as... As, as far as that goes, and then you have the Stuart and Austin, which are played by uh, bon, uh, John Boyega and so on. Uh, these aren't very, they're not as important as the other characters, but they're there for, um, they're for the movie's sake. So as I've gone into uh, Hector Idris Elba, and then you can just read through that. <sighs> so we're going into costume design now, and I chose Hector's costume to be um, a little bit strange, but it would work um, because I've gone for leathers and denim and things like that, something that would be in the 60s and 70s. And um, I think it would suit Idris Elba as a character for that part of, uh, for playing in that role. Um, also, um, he wears this kind of stuff anyway, so I wouldn't have to spend as much on uh, costume design because he'd probably have something in his wardrobe that would suit that part. Uh, we have Kevin Gary Oldman and um, we're playing on what he wears is just um, casual clothing, casual just I'm going to the pub and I found something in the dirty wash that I put on sort of thing and uh, it's nothing too fancy for, for the pub sort of scene that he has to wear throughout. Uh, ben Kingsley, uh, Tony, Dexter. Felix, and then we're going into actual Felix's costume. These are actual criminals. They'll be wearing high-end suits that are tailored to meet, uh, to meet their needs sort of thing. And um, because of this, uh, they wear the same thing, and that'll be a play on what they do in the, the movie. And um, I was looking into British-made suits and tailor-made suits and things for them that actually would be iconic uh, to the UK film. Oh yeah, I'll play my video now. Funny Kev! <laughs> <laughs> Hello Kev! 
Now I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine. His name's Austin. He's quite the specialist in these kind of circumstances. So there's kind of the uh, fully ele funny element to that. Um, what I wanted it to be was uh, narrated by Kevin and actually his thoughts and feelings at that kind of moment sort of thing. And um, throughout the whole of the video, um, it has funny different like um, bits and pieces of where um, Kevin's like, what he's thinking would be in the, the, the narration sort of thing. He's like, I've never been in this sort of situation, but I couldn't do that because um, I thought text would be a lot simpler for a test scene. Um, moving on to the target audience, as I said, I chose a D class um, age, which are from teenagers upwards to about uh, early 20s. I chose this because uh, comedy and uh, comedic elements are caught by um, younger people more than older people. Um, the the younger generation also have time off as well from school and things like that. That's why I chose my launch date to be what it was. Um, moving on to the second class uh, is a C2 class and these people are a little bit older but are still into comedy and they can afford this um, more than the younger people could because they have actual income coming in. And um, this is where most money would be spent because well, this would be the second way the most money would be spent because of their age and their income. Um, thank you for listening.